Hi there, thanks for joining. Today I want to show you how you can make a grey palette of glass yourself very easily. And of course, first I start off with showing you the benefits of a grey palette. Here I have my white palette and here I have my grey palette. And as you can see on the white palette, my colors look reasonably dark. And if I put the same, exactly the same colors on my grey palette, that they look totally different. This palette is a sort of middle grey, so it isn't to the dark side, it isn't also to the light side. It, it sounds a bit like a Star Wars movie, but this color on my white palette already looks dark. But if I put it on my grey palette, I can see that it is light. And here's another example. This color on my white palette, it already looks dark. On my grey palette, it looks light. On a grey palette, you can more easily judge the colors and the tonal values. Now I'm gonna show you how you can make this uh, very easily yourself. And I'll show you two methods, so you can choose which one you prefer. First method is I paint straight on the glass with grey paint. Second method is I use a thick piece of paper and make that grey and I just put the glass on top of it. The materials we use are a piece of glass, a piece of paper if you want to paint on paper, a big brush with slightly soft bristles, then we need glass cleaner, we need duct tape, a knife, a pellet knife, paper towel, black and white paint, acrylics. And for the last time maybe, it's hard to say goodbye, a uh, tear off palette so that we can pre-mix our colors. So the first thing you want to do is get a piece of glass of course. And you can go to special glass stores and you can uh, specify the dimensions that you want your glass to be cut. Always take care, the, the edges could be very sharp, so mind that, don't cut yourself. Another thing you can do is take a piece of glass from an old picture frame. For instance, an old family picture that no one ever likes to look at uh, again. And you can use that as well. And often these pieces of glass are rounded at the edges, but take care, it's not always the case. First thing we are gonna do is clean the glass, because we want to get rid of uh, dust, of course, and of uh, grease and stuff like that. So spray it in. I have two pieces of glass here somewhere, I think you can hardly see it. But there we go. So first, wipe it clean. And of course, this is no problem for me. I clean all the day. I'm a very tidy and neat person, of course. So there you go. This side now is clean and make it completely dry. So like this, then I turn it over and I'll do the other side as well, of course. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell, <laughs> I hope I'm not too late, but always use old clothes as well, of course, and protect the table that you're working on. In my case, it doesn't matter because my table is destroyed anyway. So now we've destroyed all the evidence. There are no fingerprints left on these pieces of glass. First, with this one, we're gonna paint directly on the glass. It's, uh, it's very easy, you can follow along. Just make sure that you put a lot of paint on your tear-off palette. So a lot of white and a little bit of black. Now uh, we want to make a sort of a middle gray. So when you look at the scale and value finder like this, I want a value that's somewhere in between of these two. But I'll add a link in the description to a file where you can find a sort of an example of, the, of a kind of a right gray uh, color. But keep in mind, acrylics dry darker than what you see on your palettes. And it doesn't have to be that precise, but preferably a little bit more to the light side than to the dark side. There are again Star Wars movies. So first, carefully add a little bit of black paint to your white. Black pigments are stronger than white pigments, so you always have to be a little bit careful. So gradually build that gray color. I'll add more, and with a palette knife you can easily make big piles of paint like this. So don't try mixing this with your brush, because then all the paint will be in the bristles of your brush. And with a palette knife you can easily mix, and then the paint is all on your palette. Spend some time trying to make a very even mixture. So, like this. Wipe off your palette knife instantly. Because as long as your palette knife is wet, you can easily clean it. Very, very clean. And you know how I like clean stuff. Now I take the big brush and I just dip it into the acrylics. And I just start like this, 
quickly wipe all the paint on the glass. Don't mind about the brush strokes, but just put enough paint on it. It's very important to just fill it like this. Enough paint. So now I'm starting to make these strokes to one side and at the end, and I barely touch my uh, glass plate, I just let it slide slightly over it. So I hardly get any traces of the bristles. So you see, and now I've done it ho uh, horizontally and now I will start doing the same thing again vertically, like this. You don't need to spend too much time for this, don't be too precise about it. It will dry completely flat, it's good like this. Now let it dry for at least 24 hours. It has to be completely dry before we do anything else with it. And the other method for this glass plate is that I want to paint on a thick piece of paper. So I put the glass away and I just put the grey paint on my piece of paper. You see I made a grey plane that's larger than my piece of glass. When this is completely dry then I can put my glass plate on it and cut out around the edges and then I have a nice grey background for my palette. Start cleaning again, the bristles of the big brush and then we just have to wait for 24 hours. So now I have a 24 hour break. What am I gonna do with that? Now they're completely dry and so this one uh, we're finished of course because you can now put on the glass plate like this and you have a glass palette. Another thing you can do with this uh, option is when you start color mixing you can as well put a photograph underneath your glass plate. So if I want to make this color for instance I need a lot of black. So you see now I can easily see that is it's too dark. Then I'll add a little bit of white and I start mixing and I can easily compare with the color underneath. If it almost completely dissolves in the color underneath then it's good enough. Oh yes I completely forgot but you can now of course cut this in the size that you need. So I just can cut it out like this if I like and you're ready to go. So that's a nice solution for a grey palette. Now we go to the other one. We have a beautiful grey palette. If you turn it around you have this glass and this side is the painted side. Now I put the glass side down so paint, uh, painted, painted side is facing upwards to me. Then I get the duct tape and I want to cover the whole area with duct tape. And we do this because this way the palette is less vulnerable of course. When I drop the palette accidentally or I accidentally sit down on it, you never know. Should it break then all pieces stay together. The first strip I put at the edge of the back side and I do it like this. So here it is on the back side and here it sticks out a little bit you see. Because I want to fold it around the glass. So here you see an example of my old glass palette. I've covered the whole back side with duct tape and I folded the duct tape around the edges so that I don't cut myself. So I let it stick out here but also at the down and at the top side. And then I cut it loose like this and I put the next strip just beside it like this. And I cut it again here again. So when you find this boring just turn on the radio or something, a podcast or some songs in the, the background, something to drink, something to eat. <laughs> now I cut this a little bit straight you see that all those pieces are a little bit of the same size like this. There you have it again these pieces of tape. So now it's time to turn it around. Now I fold these things around the corners. So, so a little bit origami. Yep. 
Well, this of course is the first layer. Now I do a second layer in the opposite direction. So like this. And again, let it stick out a little bit at the sides. Oops, there we go again with the tape. Always a disaster. So I recommend doing two layers of this at, at minimum. You can do more if you like. So make them the same sizes again. Okay, there we go again. Oh, this one is a little bit too wide. So, whoop, whoop. Turn it over and start folding again. Up, up, up. So, and this all depends on, as you can see, I'm not so that precise. I don't... For me it's a tool and I don't care if it isn't that neatly done. Uh, but of course, if you want to make a piece of art of your palette, you could spend a little more time on it and do it more precisely. Cleaning a glass palette is easy. When the paint is still wet, I can just scrape it off with my palette knife, like this. And you see, I don't even have to use much paper towel. I can use this one very easily. For the last bit, if it isn't dry already, then you can moisten your paper towel a little bit and you can easily wipe the rest of the paint of your palette but here you see some parts where the paint is completely dry then also you can make it a little bit wet it'll come off easier that way in an instant so i make it quite wet like this and then i can use a glass scraper like this you see to clean the dried up acrylics and it's very easy it's no no problem at all but always take care, don't scrape towards yourself of course, because you can get injured. But like this, nothing can happen. Only if another person is walking in front of you, of course. And then of course, these last bits you can easily get rid of with a paper towel. So, now enjoy painting of course. If this video was helpful, please put a piece of duct tape on that like button. And I'll see you next time. Ah, finally got rid of that piece of paper. Oh.